15 students are killed and others wounded when a motor shell fired by terrorists fell on the Faculty of Architecture in Damascus University. Addressing the People's Assembly, Al Halaqi says Syria is fighting world terrorism and the government goes ahead in providing citizens' requirements. The BRICS summit rejects the militarization of the crisis in Syria and calls for a solution on the basis of the Geneva Statement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Fifteen students fell martyrs today and dozens were wounded after terrorists fired two mortar shells on the Architecture College building in El Baramke area. One of the shells hit the university cafeteria and killed 12 students and wounded 26 others. The shells also left heavy material damages in the place. Two citizens were killed and others were wounded this morning when terrorists opened their machine gun fire on a passenger bus near Jdeida Tartuz in Damascus countryside. The terrorists targeted the bus which was passing on the highway near the police residential buildings at Artuz area. Medical sources at Al Muasa Hospital reported that the bodies of a girl and a child arrived in the hospital and scores of wounded citizens were hospitalized. In the resort, our armed forces have clashed with a terrorist group on Ad-Durra Bridge, scoring direct hits, killing nine terrorists and wounding others. Our armed forces also eliminated a number of terrorists near Al-Bajin School in al Jubaila neighborhood who had carried out acts of killing and looting in the area. On a Siasia Bridge, the army targeted a number of cars that were used by terrorists, destroying seven of them. In Idlib suburbs, the army carried out an operation against a hideout of a leader of a terrorist group linked to Jabhat al-Nusra in Hish village, destroying a vehicle equipped with a heavy machine gun and a number of tools and equipment used by the terrorists and killing and wounding a number of armed men. In Homs suburbs, the armed forces continue to chase terrorist groups in the village of Arrastan al-Fu'ani, al-Dab'a, Qadish and al-Dar al-Kabira, eliminating a number of terrorists and wounding others. Our army forces continue to perform their national tasks in confrontation of terrorism and its mercenaries. They eliminated a number of terrorists and seized their weapons after storming into hideout near the juveniles prison in al hasake The authorities also eliminated a number of terrorists in Al-Meridian neighborhood in the governorate and confiscated their weapons and criminal equipment. Damascus International Airport Administration confirmed that work is going normally in the airport according to the regular schedule. The airport continues to receive passenger planes as usual and the news circulated by mass media about its closure are baseless and untrue. Turkish authorities deported 600 Syrian refugees from Akchatkai camp near the Syrian-Turkish borders after using force to suppress protests inside the camp. The refugees were protesting the harsh living conditions inside the camp.
Maldivers Assembly held its seventh session of the third normal legislation cycle with the presence of all the members of the cabinet. Prime Minister Dr. Wael Al Halaqi delivered a speech in which he presented a panoramic assessment of the economic situation and the political program presented by President Bashar al Assad. Al Halaqi stressed that the government is committed to implement its economic plan according to priorities. He pointed out that all efforts will be exerted to meet the demands of citizens affected by the current crisis. Dr. Al Halaqi reviewed the systematic destruction which was inflicted upon the country's infrastructure, pointing out that 30 billion Syrian pounds were allocated to displaced families who were driven from their homes by the terrorists. The leaders of the BRICS group member countries have affirmed their rejection of the militarization of the crisis in Syria, stressing the need for the Geneva Statement to form the basis for settling this crisis. In a statement issued yesterday at the conclusion of their summit in Durban in South Africa, BRICS leaders voiced deep concern over the deterioration, security and humanitarian situation in Syria, denouncing the repeated and increasing violations of human rights and internal, international law due to the ongoing violence. The statement stressed that the decisions made during the meeting held on Syria in Geneva in 2012 must form the basis for settling the crisis. The meeting affirmed rejection of the militarization of conflict in Syria. It stressed that the transitional political process led by Syria can only be carried out through national dialogue that meets the aspirations of all Syrians and respects the country's independence, unity and sovereignty on the basis of the Geneva Statement and relevant Security Council resolutions. The statement also underlined the need to support the efforts of UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar al-Brahimi, and called on all sides to provide humanitarian needs to those who need them immediately, without any delay, and guarantee the safety of the humanitarian organization's staff. Chinese President Xi Jinping has affirmed that enhancing relations with Brazil is a firm strategic option for his country. During his meeting with his Brazilian counterpart Delma Rousseff on the sideline of the BRICS summit, the Chinese president voiced his country's readiness to work with Brazil to build up a new pattern of relations among countries in light of economic globalization. He called on both countries to benefit from their special advantages in consolidating trade and investment. On on her part, the President of Brazil, Delma Rousseff, said both countries possessed a vital opportunity to deepen their strategic cooperation. She welcomed Chinese companies on Brazilian territories to take part in the sectors of communication, transport, infrastructure and financial cooperation. A source at the European Ministerial Council has stressed the commitment of the EU and its member countries to the embargo imposed on sending weapons to Syria, affirming adherence to this stand out of conviction that solving the crisis in Syria should be peaceful through a political process. The source added that the EU commitment to this embargo will continue until next June. It admitted the presence of efforts by some European countries to lift the embargo in order to provide the Syrian opposition with weapons. However, he ruled out the the success of such effort in the absence of the necessary European consensus concerning this issue. He added that what is being discussed at present at the level of experts in Europe is the ways and means that would help the Syrians find the appropriate circumstances that would lead to a solution. Foreign Minister, Lebanese Foreign Minister Adnan Mansour, the Lebanese caretaker government has said that granting Syria's seat at the Arab League to the Doha coalition during the Arab summit in Doha constitutes a grave precedence in joint Arab action, particularly Article 8 of the Arab League Charter that stipulates that each member country of the League should respect the ruling system in the League's other member countries and that it should carry out no act that would change the regimes in the League's member states. He added that the Arab League's step would not serve stability and security in Syria and will not stop the violence. It will also have its serious repercussions on the countries of the region in the near future, Mansour added. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English.